Ocarina of Time is a video game that holds a special place in many people's hearts. It was the first 3D Zelda game, and was pretty much THE game that defined the Nintendo 64 for highlighting a massive, detailed, and living world with amazing graphics, iconic music, and an impactful story. It was also a very mysterious game that seemed to have had many hidden secrets and weird things within it. The game seemingly had endless limits, as well as a protracted development with lots of changes done over the years, which inspired a treasure trove of rumors and beliefs about the game that would forever be etched into the minds of many gamers. And perhaps the most infamous rumor was the belief that the Triforce was an obtainable object in the game. Although nothing will come close to the search for Luigi in Mario 64, the search for the Triforce could be seen as Ocarina Time's greatest rumor and hunt thing. Yeah. Join me on his amazing adventure to explore the mysteries and truth behind a Triforce in Ocarina Time. Today on Bay Quest, I am talking about the search for a Triforce in Ocarina Time. Yes. When playing Ocarina of Time, players will notice that there is an imprint of the Triforce inside of that circle thing where you house your medallions. The imprint is often an indicator that players would be able to acquire an important item at some point, considering that the imprint of the medallions would be filled with the medallions themselves upon collection. Therefore, it was only fair to expect players to acquire the Triforce as an item at some point in the game. But you don't, and the imprint is never filled in, which confused many players. The search for Triforce also began when fans were looking back at various promo videos of Ocarina of Time to see how the game evolved. In some of the earliest videos, several of them displayed Link obtaining the Triforce in a treasure chest inside some sort of weird dungeon or cave. These two factors would ultimately prove to be the spark that would begin the lengthy search for the Triforce. And also, the Triforce was always something you got in previous games, barring Link's Awakening. So, why not this game? This ultimately leads us to the massive search to find this legendary relic that spanned many years, until data mining became a thing. So, basically, as implied before, the idea behind the search for a Triforce was to figure out whether or not the Triforce could be obtained in the game, and if it could, where could we get it? Many theories, guides, and tips sprout up to help players find the Triforce, as well as stuff that would be surrounding the Triforce, such as certain items, abilities, and even locations. These theories, guides, and tips were very similar to the weird and insane tips to get Luigi in Mario 64, often being stupid goose chases that would see you run around the whole place and doing random and ridiculous crap to do things that it didn't really make sense, you know? Why, why would anyone want to do this? If anything, many of these methods were pretty hard to pull off, borderline impossible, perhaps done on purpose to hide the fact that a Triforce was simply not in the game, but just done to string people along. Oh shoot, I mean no, it's totally in the game guys, you didn't hear that. Shh, I didn't say that, it's in the game man. Many rumors often involve showing images of Triforce imprinted in the status screen, being filled up with the full Triforce to make it seem legit. There were also rumors that while you were in the process of getting the Triforce, Dark Link will show up in your house for some reason, because of course he would. We all know Dark Link does engage in some home invasion. But, you know... Just for fun, let's talk about the methods to get the Triforce. A lot of these rumors we're going to talk about came from Odyssey and Hyrule, one of the most famous Zelda sites in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Well, one of the more famous sites. And these were provided by the site owner VideoGamer X via discussions with users. Sadly, the site ceased updates in 2006, and although the site had since been given a new domain, it seemed like the site is still dead and will forever remain dead. Let's not have that ruin our fun. On to the tips. Okay guys, did you hear you can get the Triforce in Ocarina of Time? Here's a method I found. Okay, so you know that weird lava pool in Gandor's castle, you know, under it? 
you know how it seems like it's just like a bunch of rings that move into some weird center point? Okay, what you gotta do is to throw a bomb into the center of that lava pool. This will somehow unlock a passage to some sky fortress, which leads to a place called the Sky Temple, where you will manage to find the Triforce pieces. Yeah, this doesn't work. It's not possible to get a bomb into the center of that lava pool. Trust me, I've tried. Okay, let me try another one. So, guys, did you know that you can get the Triforce in the secret Unicorn Fountain? You know, that special type of fountain with a statue of three unicorn heads in it? This Unicorn Fountain is located in an inaccessible cave located in Zora's Domain which is too deep for young Link to access, and is inaccessible for adult Link normally due to being covered in ice. Along with the Triforce, you can also get the ability for Link to fire sword beams. Cool, huh? Okay, I did say it was inaccessible, but there is a way to access it. To reach this place, you need to get back into the Great Deku Tree as Adult Link and locate a hammer that could shatter the ice, allowing you to reach the cave. And once you enter the cave, you can get the Triforce and the Sword Beam ability. Yeah, this is full of crap because you normally can't access the Deku Tree as an adult, and hacking yourself into it would reveal no such hammer. Or anything significantly different about the Deku Tree. And even if you could access the cave, there's nothing really there, and it was more likely that this was supposed to be an alcove meant to house a boring treasure chest. Okay, okay, that last one obviously fake, but not this one. Here's what you do, believe me guys. As Adult Link, Go to the center of Hyrule Field, like dead center, and then plant a bomb. And then, when it explodes, go straight to Death Mountain from the side with the falling rocks and fairy, and then go to the furthest most right area you can get when you enter, land on those rectangular platforms below, and play Zelda's lullaby. When you do, leave the cave from the fairy Exit and Kepora Gebora will be there. Make him fly your way, fly you back, sorry, to. Uh, what? Brain fart. Make Kepora Gebora fly you back to the village and then go directly to Dompe's house in the graveyard. Read his diary. If done correctly, his diary should say, Gone fishing. Go to the Lake Hylia fishing hole and then get two fairly big fish consecutively. I don't know what the hell that means, but do it. Run back to town, I guess as child Link now, and go to the castle courtyard. Uh, I, it, it wasn't entirely clear, cause I, uh, no, 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 what am I doing? I'm making this sound fake, it's not fake, it's not fake. If done properly, if you do go back to the castle courtyard and follow all the steps, the unused blue fairy character will give you the Triforce in the courtyard. Yeah! Now I know that sounds like someone was having too much of the good stuff, but this was a real rumor. That really makes no sense because how on earth are you going to even figure out half of this stuff? Where the hell is the center of Hyrule? That could be anywhere near Lon Lon Ranch. How do you get two gigantic fish consecutively? And what's the required size to be gigantic or whatever? The fish are measured with specific numbers, not adjectives. And how on earth is the game going to track all this crap? None of this makes sense. But all of this and more was a type of insanity that people fell for back in the day. Including me, sadly. So, I'm insane too. Some of this stuff involve contacting fake people from Nintendo. Others involve alleged quotes and poems from Miyamoto. And doing weird tasks and playing songs in weird spots. You know, the typical weird crap. 
But nothing compares to what would be posted on the fan site, Hyrule, the Land of Zelda. Okay, it was one of the other fan sites at the time. In 1999, a series of screenshots were given to the site's owner by a supposed 17-year-old Colombian woman named Ariana Almondos, who claimed that she managed to acquire the Triforce. According to her and the screenshots, the Triforce was located in a secret location called the Temple of Light, which harbored a unicorn fountain. Of course. To reach this location, Link must learn the song Overture of Sages from Kapora Gabora, which was apparently a very secretive song that you would have to play from memory, similar to the Scarecrow song, although you can't make up the song as it was already made. The Overture of Sages would have been taught before Link pulls the Master Sword, and you must play the song in front of the Master Sword, but you shouldn't pull it or you'll mess up the whole thing permanently. Doing this properly would warp young Link to the Temple of Light, which is apparently a maze where you have to reach the Triforce without a map, and you would enter a cinematic where you would interact with Raru before he shows you the Triforce, although you can't get it yet because you're too young, and you'll be forced out to continue the game as planned. What the hell was that? That's kind of stupid and will only cause major plot holes to form. Aside from that, it also seemed like the other sages would have been in this location as well, with Raru being present in one of the screenshots, allegedly according to the fan site. I guess that's him, maybe? And on top of that, Almondos also dispelled the rumors of the Gossip Stones and Darkling being a part of this Triforce quest, stating that they're nonsense and make no sense, and you should stop believing in those rumors. So, at first glance, the screenshots proved convincing, showing unique locations and convincing sequences that seem to match Ocarina of Time pretty closely. But, if you look slightly closer from that distance of 10 feet from your computer screen at 10% size, you'll see that there are noticeable errors going on, some of which got Almondos in a weird spot and was slowly revealing the hoax. I mean, no, no, it's, it's, it's not a hoax, obviously it's real. Duh. But, um, the biggest is that the scene with Young Link learning the song here, and you will notice that he has the sword on the wrong side. This was before 3DS Master Quest, so Link would have his sword on the left side, not the right side as seen here. Very obvious inconsistency that Almondos had no answer for, despite attempts to cover it up with weird outbursts and hiding from the public. Oh man, I... Darn it, I... I really shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be disproving this obviously true fact. But okay, let me, let me stop that. The pictures in the Temple of Light were also cut and pasted with filters applied to make it look convincing, but they revealed inconsistencies, like Link being in a very strange angle that made parts of him look longer than they should be. What did all this mean? Well, further investigation proved that the pictures and the whole thing was pretty much fake, and Ariana or Ariana, Ariana herself, or should I say the creator, admitted that the entire thing was one giant and elaborate hoax made to mess with people, even saying that Ariana herself is a hoax. So, what's the truth? Can you get the Triforce in Ocarina of Time? Well, as an item, no, you cannot get the Triforce. Though, that was obvious to everyone by now. I mean, you kind of already have the Triforce since cutscenes show Link with the Triforce of Courage, but it really doesn't do anything for him, at least gameplay-wise. Besides, Zelda and Gandorf already have the Triforces of Wisdom and Power respectively, so yeah, if you pay attention, you'll see that the Triforce is already messed with in the game, and you, besides, kind of already have it regardless. Not as an item, but still. Oh shoot, should I have said spoilers for that? Eh, it's been like, what, 30 years now? I think everyone knows the story by now. 
But regardless, I mean, interviews with Nintendo staffers at the time proved that you can't get the Triforce as an item because even they can't get it, even with the methods provide. What the f what the hell did I just write? And more recently, data mining shows that there is no such code for any situation where you can get the Triforce, even with the various beta codes we have so far. Sure, you can find the 3D model used for the Triforce in those cutscenes, and there's also some data for the rumored sword beam attack, which is terrible by the way, I'm glad they removed it, but that's it. In the 2020 and 2021 Nintendo Giga Leaks, beta data connected to Ocarina Time showcased data for the Unicorn Fountain, which pretty much revealed that the Unicorn Fountain was... nothing really special, and was likely just an alternate design for a fairy fountain. Looked cool though. Sadly, still no obtainable Triforce, and to be honest, I doubt that was really important. The game and story evolved to a point where getting the Triforce just kind of happens automatically without much fanfare, and it's not really an item. I mean, it probably was planned at one point for Link to get the Triforce as an item in Ocarina Time, but I think as development went on, they just changed so much of it that the idea of getting the Triforce became kind of unimportant in the whole story and all that, so, I mean, you know, it just kind of happens. Besides, you can get the Triforce in Wind Waker, so... Oh well. But that was the search for the Triforce in Ocarina of Time. It was a crazy little goose chase that everyone fell for back in the day, thanks to the very secretive and mysterious nature of video games at the time, before data mining could help shed light on the truth of video games. And, I mean, you know, as stupid as those rumors were, they were a pretty fun part of video games regardless that I know people enjoy. That aura of mystery that surrounded these video games often brought up fun discussions and crazy fun times doing this stupid stuff. But that stupid stuff was good since it showed how much people loved and cared for a video game. It was harmless fun that people enjoyed, and although this era of video game rumors has pretty much ended, we'll still have crazy things to do with video games as long as they still exist. But anyway. This is KC Obey Quest signing out. I'll see you all later. This was a Cobalt Steel video by MS Bernie. Like, comment, and subscribe if you liked what you saw. Until next time, see you all later.